Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on the chain rule. Okay, so before we get to the actual chain rule examples, let me remind you of just a simple power rule. And, and I promise there's a reason for this. So let's just say our function is y equals x to the fifth power. And how we found this derivative is the exponent comes down in front and gets multiplied by whatever that coefficient was. So there's my five. Keep the base the same, and then we subtracted one from that exponent. We're going to apply that exact same thing, but when our base is not just necessarily x, it might be another function. So we've got a composite function sort of idea here. So let's try and go through these four examples on the chain rule. And again, I'm not proving the chain rule to you, we're just going to be applying it. So if you can finish your statement with times the derivative of the inside, then you are applying chain rule. So let me show you what I mean. Right now in question number one, we are asked to find this derivative of this function where it's this 4x minus 7x squared all raised to the third power. So what this looks like to me right now is blah, 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 to the third. Okay, it's some something to the third power. So I'm going to apply the chain rule. Now again, chain rule is not living on its own. It lives inside of power rule or it lives inside of trig, but you're using chain rule inside of another derivative rule. So right now I'm actually going to do power rule. So let me show you what that looks like. F prime of X equals so keep in mind, if I'm just doing power rule, I'll sort of highlight this in pink or purple here, whatever that looks like. I'm going to bring my exponent down in front of my base and multiply. So keep your base the same. Now you are subtracting one from that exponent. That's the power rule part. Now if you finish this with times the derivative of the inside, now is when I'm multiplying by the derivative of that highlighted inside function. Again, that's the composite function idea. So the derivative of that bright purple or pink color there is four minus 14 X. And the reason I really like chain rule as an option for questions like this is because your F prime is in factored form. So notice I didn't actually have to cube out the original function and then do the derivative term by term, although certainly that is an option, but there's my answer. So we're gonna do it again after a quick rewrite here in number two. So looking across, y equals two times the fourth root of four minus x squared. So let's do a quick rewrite here. y equals two times four minus x squared to the one fourth. Again, it's power over root. Four minus x squared is all to the first over the fourth root. Okay, so let's find this derivative. Well, I'm ready. Y prime equals, again, chain rule lives inside of power rule. So for right now, I have all this stuff to the one fourth. So if you just apply power rule first, you're ready to go. So this, bring down this one fourth multiply, so two times a fourth is a half. Keep your base the same. Subtract one from your exponent, which gives me a negative three fourths, that's my exponent. Then just finish, again, with times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of that inside function, or my base in this case, is negative two x. I could absolutely do a rewrite here because if I'm looking at this y prime, my first and my third factors will multiply well together. So for example, this one half and this negative two x, I might wanna say y prime is negative x times four minus x squared as a quantity to the negative three fourths. And that might be a little bit easier to either type into your systems or to understand. 
the risk you take towards the end is if you don't have that negative 2x in parentheses because you're multiplying by it, it looks like you're subtracting that term, which would then mean something entirely different. So watch your parentheses. Okay, number three, I can see that I have all this stuff raised to the second. Now, if you looked at this and said, oh, quotient rule, not yet. Now, certainly when something is raised to the second power, one option, of course, is just multiply this out and then use quotient rule because you'll still have a fraction. But if we, if that was to the 21st, well, I don't think that that option is really efficient anymore. So what I'm going to go ahead and suggest is just use chain rule. So here we go. So f prime of x, I'm ready for the derivative. Power rule, bring down your exponent, keep your base the same, subtract one from your exponent, so now that will become a one. I'm not gonna necessarily write that oftentimes because it looks like a prime, so I made that a real fancy one. If you don't write it, you don't have to times the derivative of what's inside. Now is when you are quotient ruling it. So I'll say low d high minus high d low. We should be pretty well versed now in quotient rule. All over the low squared and literally I am done. Everything is in as factored form as it can get. If you wanted to multiply out that numerator, you certainly can. And so there would be your other option. Maybe that's a little bit better for you. One suggestion is though, I never ever multiply out that denominator um, because again, you're losing your factored form. It's really nicely factored. If you wanted to write it all over x squared plus two quantity cubed, you certainly could. Um, but I don't know that there's necessarily any reason for that. I definitely have a plan if I set this equal to zero, which we will do later. Um, so I can see my domain restrictions if there are any, all of that. So try to keep things in factor form if you can. So let's move on to our last one for this video. Y equals the square root of X plus one fourth sine of the quantity two X squared. Now there is a big difference between sine squared of 2x versus sine of 2x quantity squared. Hopefully we recognize this difference. In this first one here, this is sine 2x times sine 2x, right? Because you are squaring the sine function. Versus the second one, I am just squaring that quantity of 2x. So it really is sine of 4x squared, which is how we're going to look at that. So I am going to do a rewrite here for this first or this um, question four. So it's y equals x to the half plus one fourth sine of 4x squared. Okay, and now I'm ready to do my derivatives here. So y prime x to the half we might know as one over two rad x, but I just caution you, it's still one half x to the negative half. And then again, if you wanted to move that square root to your denominator, you can. Plus one fourth times the derivative of sine of something is cosine of that something. So the derivative of sine of my angle is cosine of my angle and I'm going to stop my trig times the derivative of what's inside and now the derivative of what's inside is that 4x squared. So times the derivative of 4x squared would be times 8x. So let me repeat that process there. The 1 4th sine of 4x squared, right, so this part right here, becomes one fourth, then the derivative of sine is cosine of the angle. So notice your angle should not change times then in the end, the derivative of that angle. So I do a couple things. I want to make sure I'm stopping my trig so that I never accidentally multiply the four X squared with the eight X. I cannot do that. Okay. So I don't want to by accident combine those together. So I stop my trig, it's cosine of four X squared. 
And then the other double check that you should have for yourself is that your angle in the beginning should match the angle in your answer. That's the same statement as our base, which I'll show you as a, as a summary here at the end. So if I wanted to do a rewrite to clean this up a little bit, this might be rewritten as 1 over 2 rad x plus then what most people will end up seeing is oftentimes that first factor and that third factor are going to multiply well together. So I have one fourth of 8x is 2x times cosine of 4x squared. And the reason I like to put that in front is then I don't necessarily need the brackets or parentheses around the cosine function. So if we take a look at these four problems just um, holistically here real quick, when you look at the starting base, like starting base in number one was highlighted, there's my base in my problem. It does not change. If I look at number two, four minus x squared was my base. I'll raise to the one fourth. And in my answer, here's a four minus x squared. It was power rule, so of course now my exponent changed, but you're not allowed to change the base unless you're doing some algebra manipulation there. Then if we look at number three, the same thing will be true here. My base was x plus five over the quantity x squared plus two, so there's that. And in number four, my angle does not change. My angle is the quantity two x squared, which we talked about, that is definitely equivalent to four x squared, okay? In the next video, we'll go over some more complexities with chain rule, how to apply it a little bit more, and also deal with things like sine squared, etc. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful.